Hey guys, it's Vandy as well, back in another card fight Vanguard as on the Vandy Weekly Reveal. So if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. And let's get one started. So, a week has gone by, more or less, since the last time we've had a Nuzzle on the Vandy video, and once more, obviously, more clan selection stuff has gotten revealed. And f funny note is, I have more or less made a deck for all- no, I have, I have made a deck for all the ones that have been seen so far, and I have test played a good chunk of them. So I'm pretty sure I know more or less what I'm talking about this time, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have our Gear Chronicle reveals, Steam Maidens, or Steam Maiden Illuru, AK base, 10k shield, grade 1 boost, auto act, vanguard once per turn, soul boss 1, bind a grade to a lower card from your hand, draw a card, if you bound a trigger for this cost, draw a card, and auto rear at the end of the battle, attack if your vanguard is a Steam Maiden, his card name, ground boss 1, bind it, and then choose a grade 2 from your bind zone and call to rear. First off, literally an hour before I did this video, I did a Steam Maiden deck profile, so saying that again is kind of like deja vu for me, but... All around is a really good vanguard skill, like you already have your starter and soul and you guarantee to get a draw off it, then you can bind that draw maybe if it's a great or lower, and then get another draw off it, or if you bound a trigger, you get a second draw, so it's really good for like a grade 1 ride because it means you basically get two draws, and you know, the on attack ability, it doesn't have to attack a vanguard for it, it can attack a rear guard, as long as your vanguard is steam maiden, it's really good and you, you get to call a unit. Now I'm going to be repeating myself from the steam maiden video, even though you guys are going to see, see the steam maiden video after this. But pretty much what I say in the Steam Maiden video is that I like how Steam Maidens uh, took on the aspect of Witches, except, like, they did basically what Witches failed at, where if you don't remember what Witches did in V Collection, the first one, is that Witches, they only had, the while well, they had an archetype of Witches, they only had three Witch cards that actually focused on the a certain ability, and the other Witch cards were just support cards for other decks, but not specifically Witches, which is why my Witch deck wasn't really that good, and why, like, a lot of them didn't have synergy with each other. Steam Maidens... While they don't have a great deal of good Steam Maidens that have synergy with each other, they don't require the other members of the Steam Maiden archetype to be useful, unlike the Witches. The Steam Maiden archetype is just focused on whatever the hell, but the new three cards only require the Vanguard to be a Steam Maiden, and the Vanguard requires you to have Steam Maiden rear guards, but point is, it's more consistent because as long as your Vanguard Steam Maiden, they don't really care. So all around, I think it's really good that they did it that, that way, so like, you know, people who complain about Witches, they fixed it with Steam Maiden, so they're probably going to fix Witches too eventually. So all around, I mean, that was just a general thing, but it, it was still a pretty good card, because she gets the multi-attack, and I give her 4 for that. Next up, we have Steam Maiden Alru, 10k base, 5k shield, grade 2 with intercept, auto one is placed on rear from bind zone, bind a card from your drop zone for each grade of the bound card, it gets plus 3, so if you bind a grade 0, it gets nothing, but if you bound like a grade 3, it gets 9. And then auto rear at the end of the battle that attacked, if your vanguard is, has Steam Maiden, it's card in counter boss 1, bind it, choose a grade 3 from your bind zone, call it to rear. So basically, they do the same thing, except one does it to grade higher. Obviously, you're going to call this from bind zone with this thing's effect, but the good news is about this card is that, one, its first ability, I mean, well, yeah, its first ability is free and it's an on rear guard skill, but the thing about this deck, it went from what I played with it, it was, like, very setup heavy where you, I mean, you could technically go into it randomly, but you kind of want to do some setup first to make sure you can get plays with it, and this deck does really good with the setup play because it can get power, you can get multi-attacks. <sighs> I basically turned a forest deck into an Excel deck and then it hit really big numbers, or not really big numbers, but really decent numbers. Like basically what Magnolia would be if you shoved a force gift on like half of the rear guards and none of the rear guards were the bear that can give power, because obviously that would be a bit too good. So like that's pretty much what it was. It was honestly really fun and I like this deck a lot. So I give this thing a four of. Then we have Steam Maiden Elu. Okay, we already know I'm biased towards this card. Not because it's a girl, but because of the, the moon in the background. We, we all know I love the moon. Like, we already know I'm biased towards this card. But <laughs> it's a really cool card. Because if you don't remember the backstory on this one, it basically came out in Stride Gate, and Chrono was going to use it as main grade 3 because Jamie suggested it, but then Chrono's with boobs wasn't allowed, apparently. So they just chose not to give him this. And, I mean, it's still a real card and back in G, obviously, but it was never used in the anime, at least to my memory. So they brought it back in V, and honestly, it's really good. So her skill, besides being a 13k base, grade 3, 200 with a force gift, act vanguard once per turn, bind a card from your drop zone, choose a steam maiden, and it's carding from your bind zone, call it to rear. So that's really good. You can bind a... Uh, steam Maiden from your drop zone, even though you can bind anything, and then get that Steam Maiden right back, and you can get a Luru with it, and the reason why you get a Luru with it, being the only Steam Maiden trigger, is Auto Van once per turn. At the end of the battle, that your rear guard with Steam Maiden's card name attacked. Bind that unit, choose a card from your bind zone that's grade plus one for the co for the card bound from the cost, call it to rear guard, and if you call it a grade one, you counter charge one. But yeah, you're supposed to use it with a Luru, basically, because, like, you put a Force Gift on a Luru, make it so that it can hit with a 15k. Good news is, it doesn't have to attack a Vanguard either. Like, all of these don't require attacking Vanguard, which is really nice. That means you can just swing into Rear Guards and kill them. Bind a Luru for free, get a Grade 1, Counter Charge 1. Like, that's what I like about her. She doesn't cost anything besides Binding, and she actually gets you Counter Charges. To, so you can use these two more, which is really nice. 
And then her other abilities continues to rear during your turn. For each card in your bind zone, it gets plus one. If it's on van, it gets plus three instead. So all around really good. It gets numbers on van, gets numbers on rear. So if you want to call her from bind zone for this thing's effect, you can. All around, really nice card, and I like her. She doesn't require the rest of the Steam Maidens, or like, she doesn't require a great deal of Steam Maidens to do what she does on like witches, where like half their abilities required like just cards with rich in their name, and like it would be better to run more witches. This is a scenario where like you can run just this and the Aluru and the new cards, and you'd be fine, honestly. So, four copies, because she's a really good card. Then we have our Mega Colony reveals. The ones that I haven't tested out yet, but the ones I think are going to be really interesting. Brilliant Blaster, Grade 1 Boost, 10k Shield, 8k Base. Auto back or rear guard circle at the end of your turn. If your opponent has no rear guards at stand, bounces to your hand. Then if you return it to your hand and you have six or less hand cards, Soul Blast 1 draw card. So basically, get a free 10k, and you may Soul Blast 1 to draw a card. So you can be as aggressive as you want with this thing, and as long as they have no standing rear guards at the end of the battle, you essentially get to do things. Don't play with this in premium, though, because people will just run stand triggers to fuck this over. Then we have auto when it's placed on guard circle. If your opponent's vanguard is in rest, soul blast one, discard one. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards, rest it, and that unit cannot stand until end of turn. So pretty much a way to just rest another card. And, I mean, the good news is it just says choose an opponent's rear guard, so you can just throw this out when they are attacking with their vanguard, and then, I mean, yeah, they have to have their vanguard arrest, but basically, you know, you can throw this out and then null find attack, which is really good, like, I don't know what to say about this one, like, it's honestly really good, like, I, I have no negative comments about it, just good, if someone hits the ban list, I, I know he won't hit the ban list, but if, if I had to give my guess of something that would hit the ban list out of everything I've seen so far, I feel like this would go on it. I don't know why. I just had the feeling that it would go on the balance, but I don't. I don't honestly think it will. The most I think they would do to it is limit it, but I don't even think they would do that because it's not that broken. It's not broken at all. It's just an interesting skill. I didn't think they would give a grade one four of. Next up, we have machining armor beetle nine k base five k show grade two with intercept auto. I mean act rear guard once per turn. Rest another rear guard. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards. Rest it, and that unit cannot stand during the stand phase, and it gets plus six k for the turn. What is with the machinings and the specific number of six k? I know, like, for some reason, Mantis, this, and maybe, no, Scattering Horde doesn't get power, does it? I don't know why, like, the two machines that come to my head, they both get 6k. Why is it specifically 6k? Is it just my, is it just those two and I'm going crazy? Or am I solving the number for the Bermuda Triangle of how machinings are just the devil, but when you add zeros onto the sixes? Because if you take out the two sixes, we get 6-6, six, six, and there's probably another card that has sixes. Oh my god, I cracked it, machinings are the devils. <laughs> Anyways... It continues rear guard. If you're in rest, all of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as it can, cannot. They lose intercept and boost and cannot gain them. So this thing basically, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you where I got this from. I got it from W Slasher's video because I didn't really think about it until I saw it. So go check out his video of him doing the Meg Colony reveals. That this counters Bastion's deck. In premium, I do agree to that. But if you want to understand why I'm so calm about that decision, go check out his video and go check in the comments of something very stupid I said. And for some reason, I chose to do what I said anyways, because sometimes you just need to be incredibly stupid to do dumb, dumb, dumb things. <laughs> Just, oh, what I did that day was so dumb. I think I deserve the, uh, I think I deserve, like, a, what's it called? I'm trying to think of what it is. A, not a world record. Oh, yeah, a, a record for just the dumbest decision ever made by a Vanguard player. But either way, it's still pretty good. You know, you get you a free rest for no apparent reason. Gets the 6k, which means it's the devil. And can also prevent intercept and boost from being gained. And nullifies them. So four copies. And then four copies of our main grade, well not four copies, but I would put him at four because he's your main grade three most likely. Martial Arts Mutant Master Beetle. I can't say I like the art though, but I think I do think he's cool. Grade three to enjoy drive excel, protect gift, 12k base, act vanguard or rear guard, once per turn, counter bus one, choose two of your opponent's rear guards and rest them, and they cannot stand during the opponent's next stand phase. And if this unit is on vanguard circle, it gets the original power of all those chosen units. So paralyze two units, and then if it's on van do a um do a stag beetle the thing i find interesting about this is that you can paralyze two units while this thing's on the rear guard i just find i don't know why i just feel like that's weird for a card in v to have the ability to do 
like just do its main mechanic on rear guard, but it, it's still good. And then auto van when this unit attacks, counterblast one and discard a card. It gets plus one drive for and done about it for every three of yours and your opponent's rear guards at rest. So some of you're not playing against an Excel player, and you both have a full field. You have five drives. Wait, yeah, you get quintet drive, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, it's not really that bad. It's like. Really good. You just discard one and counterboss one. Get a five drives. Counterboss isn't really a problem in Bad Colony because like they have a ride over counter. They gave us like two really good counter. To my memory, we at least got two counter charges in the first set, if not three. So like you know, counterblast is never really a problem with Mega Colony. <laughs> to anyone who says it does, I would love to see why because I've never had a personally. I've never had a problem with counterblasting in Bad Colony. That's saying something from the person who was locked into counterblast spamming for a year. So. <laughs> If I say it doesn't have a problem, unless you can prove me otherwise, I have reason to believe that it doesn't, unless it's play style difference. But, um, all around, really good card, gets you extra drives, gets you four possible paralyzed if there's just two of this thing on the board at once. I just, I don't know why, something, feel, something feels like it's missing about this card, I, I don't know why, it just feels like it's missing something. I can't really put my finger on it, it's still good, I just feel like it's missing something, but either way, really nice grade 3. Next up, we have Great Nature. You've already seen me do a deck profile on this. You've at least seen me do the deck profile on Locks. I don't know if you've seen me do the deck profile. You most likely haven't seen me do the deck profile of Polaris yet, but let's go ahead and get Locks over with. I mean, not Locks, the Great Nature goes over with. Clothing deck build, 8k base, 10k shield, grade 1 with boost. On to when it's discarded from your deck, you may Soul Blast 1 to add it to your hand. Okay, you know, a lot of people say Great Nature has a Soul Blast problem. That statement is proven true, and they keep adding to the problem. Thanks a lot for that one, Bushy. And auto rear, when your other rear guards retire from your card's ability, soul bus one, retire, draw a card. So, Compass Lion, uh, Chat Noir, I'm trying to think of other cards that kill their own rear guards. Those are the only two of them that can come off the top of my head that kill their own rear guards, besides, like, locks. But, yeah, it's, it's good, you know, it, it gets you... You granted you have to soul blast for it and kill it, but you at least get a draw. I kind of wish it was like, if it's milt, send it to soul, just so like you're getting a plus out of it. But you know, it's fine. It, it's a good card for what it is. I give it personally a three of, because I don't think you need to run more soul blasters, but the free draw is, I mean, not the free draw, but like the draw is nice, so I give it a three of. Next up is the big elephant himself, the guardian of truth locks, and I'm somewhat debating about making this titled video yes times two because we all know how much i love elephants and how much i love this card grade three twin drive excel gift 12k base act vanguard once per turn put a card from your hand card put a hand card to soul reveal top three reveal any number of grade add any number of grade threes from sorry add all grade threes not any number you have to add all of them that are grade threes from among them to your hand and discard the rest if a grade three unit was put into the soul for this card's effect this unit gets the following ability which continues van during your turn all your grade threes get plus five so that includes itself, so like he's at 17, all your other grade 3s are 17. Honestly, this feels like a Bastion card. That's what the that's what a Bastion should have done, or like an order that just says, put a hand card to soul, look at top 3, do a thing, and then if you put a grade 3 to soul for its effect, do it. Like, honestly, I feel like that's a Bastion card, but who cares? And then, auto van, at the end of your turn, choose up to two of your grade 3 rear guards, retire them. For each unit, retire, draw a card, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and retire. Needless to say, this is a really good support card. He searches your grade 3s for you. Granny, he sends them to drop, but... He's a really good searcher because he does it without counter blast or soul blast. He actually gets you a soul, and he can possibly pump up your rear guards. Obviously, I mean units. So he's obviously a ghost first turn ride. Not to mention like he can nuke your own great three rear guards to get you a draw and nuke your opponent's rear guards at the same time also without counter blasting. But I don't think he's a mate. I don't think he's a side grade three. If you've seen the video from yesterday, then you understand that he is a main grade three in my build. That's right. I made a deck that has twenty three grade threes to use this thing as a main grade three and it works because honestly this thing's really, really good like you can bind with enough grade threes because because he's such a good supporter you can literally shove him like i'm not even joking you can shove him whatever grade threes you want and he supports them so well because not only can he search for all of them but he can give them power and he can use them as sack fodder to get you hand cards and kill your opponent's rear guards honestly lox is a really good card just because like you know he can do all of his skills without paying counter boss or soul boss. Gives you soul, which is a great nature's main problem. Search out your stuff and get you power. And he supports literally every grade three. Not just main grade threes, but every grade three. Okay, that statement might be a bit debatable, but it's... it's with my, my testing, it's true. 
all around, Lox is a very good card, and I'm really glad they printed it. Honestly, I'm surprised, like, he's not the main, with the skill that they gave him, I'm really surprised, like, he's not the main release for Great Nature, because honestly, it's really good. Four of, and any, okay, maybe not any deck, like, maybe three of, but in my personal build, where I make him my main grade three, four of. And next up, we have our Battler of the Twin Brush Polaris. Okay, I don't like this guy as much as I like Locks. It's partially because, yes, Locks is an elephant, but I like Polar Bears, and I honestly liked Polaris back in the OG, and I was really awaiting his return. There's just something I hate about him, and I'll go over in a second. So, Grade 3, Twin Drive, Excel Gift, 12k base, Auto Van. Once per turn, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, counter bus 1, choose one of your rear guards, and that unit gets power equal to this unit's power, including the boosted. And then, if your chosen unit has 50,000 power or greater, stand that unit. And if the chosen unit has 70,000 power or greater, and your opponent's vanguards are greater, greater, stand this unit gets plus 15 for the turn. Okay, needless to say, if you get that ability off, like all of it, your opponent's gonna have to drop PGs for the one that hit the 70. And then this thing is at least gonna be a 27. Now, to do this, the easiest way to go about this is get an Excel 1, throw an Amber's Triangle on it, immediately, that is plus 20 to the triangle, so it's at 32. You boost it, this thing with any grade 1 that has an AK base, and then use Polaris skill to get plus 20 on the Amber Triangle, boom, it's now become a 7, no, not 72, a 52k column, and then you shove two triggers on it, 72, and then you get the restand of this boy. All around, like, it's a good skill, and it's very cheap. It costs no soul blast. It only costs one counter blast. My problem with this is, like, it requires... It, while power for great nature isn't really that bad, it requires you to, like, hit a decent number relatively quickly, and he can't do it on his own. Like, for example, it. what I wish they would have done is, like, they can keep this skill, but I wish they would have given it, like, another skill that's maybe, like, soul blast one give a unit plus five that's good enough for me like it's granted that's the sole problem but at least gives a unit plus five and makes it easier for it to hit the bigger number like that's what i wish it was but you know players is still pretty good get you a possible restand get you two possible restands actually makes a number really big all around he's a pretty good card if it wasn't a once per i wish it also wasn't a once per turn on the add your power to another unit it could just be a once per turn on the stand bar but it's still pretty good so i give it a four of and then we have our cargo reveals. I have been awaiting this one in particular because I used to main Law Keeper because I only had one copy of him, but he was really good. So, Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 30k base, Dragonic Law Keeper. Auto Vanguard at the start of your battle phase, each battle phase, not just yours, so your opponent's two. Counter Boss 1 and Soul Boss 1, so thankfully it's optional. For every three of you and your opponent's rear guards, your opponent chooses one of their rear guards and binds it. And at the end of your turn, your opponent calls the cards that were bound by this effect to rear guard circle. The auto abilities of the opponent's called cards do not activate from this, so they can't activate on places. And the bind cards happen, the bind cards are counted before stuff is bound. So, like, say for example, you and your opponent both have five rear guards, they bound a total of three. So, even if, like, after they bind two, it's now down to eight cards on board, they still have to bind the third one because that's what it was before the cards are bound. So, that's how Lawkeeper works. Pretty interesting because at most, unless both player. If neither player is playing an Excel deck, obviously you won't, but if your opponent's not playing an Excel deck, then the most I would get bound at a time is three, which is really nice that he can get rid of a board at a time. And then Continuous Vanguard, and he counts your units too, so they barely have a board. You can just call on most of your board and then get rid of theirs, because at least if you have four and they have two, that's still three unit. That's still two units for them, so that's really good. And Continuous Vanguard, if your opponent has no back row rear guards, all of your front row, sorry, all of your units in general, not just your front row, get plus five. This and your back row, and your rear guards as well. And if your opponent's vanguards are greater or greater, they're, and they have no rear guards, they get plus five power. Active on both players' turns. So, basically, if they have no back row permanently, you do get the plus five, but if they have no rear guards permanently, they get the plus five. So... I mean, there's a way, like, you can even it out, obviously, because if they have no rear guards, then both players will be getting the plus five in the scenario. So he's a really interesting card that he can buff up both players. I don't know how to feel about that, because, like, I mean, thankfully, he calls back the bound card, so, like, they would have to go out of their way to kill their own rear guards. But I think it's interesting. It definitely adds a unique flair to him, and I like that he's returning with that flair like he didn't like lose his old skill and then replace with something else no he kept his old skill and made it better so i really like that and i love this card well maybe not better but still i like this card i give it a fourth next up we have dauntless dominate dragon reverse grade three twin drive force gift 13k base we all awaited this one auto van when a normal unit appears in your drive check counter boss one and put that card on your rear guard as a locked card 
And if you put, this unit gets plus 10k to drag for the battle. So pretty much it's like what Felt Rosa does where you pay the counterblast cost. I mean, slightly different because Felt Rosa calls the card anyways and then you can counterblast one to get the extra drag. But pretty much it's the same thing where you counterblast one, you do lose your rearguard circle. Granted, you can put it on any rearguard circle whether it has a unit on it or not. Boy becomes a 23 at the very least and gets an extra drive. So... I run pretty good. You should have forced two on this to this thing. Your opponent's screwed because then it tells you never to two to pass this thing because it's always guaranteed that they will see either two triggers, two normal units, or one or both. Like if unless they have one counter blast, and even if they have one counter blast, still don't two to pass it because it's always going to be guaranteed to go through with a two to pass. And then auto van at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, soul blast one unlock all of your locked cards and retire those units. For each unit retired, your opponent must play. Choose three of your own rear guards, retire them. If two or more were not retired, remove a gift marker from one of your own circles. So guaranteed after one use of this, they nuke their after two uses, they lose their entire board unless they're playing an Excel deck. But if they don't nuke, so they nuke only one though, because maybe they just don't call their board, they're also losing gift markers. Granted, it has to be from a circle, so it doesn't work for protect markers, but honestly, that's still pretty good, and I like reverse for that. It gives you power, gives you still extra drives like he used to, combined with the old Dauntless, he's still pretty good. In fact, he's kind of better because not only does he give power to himself, but he can give more power to your rear guards, and he can remove gifts. Three, four, a really good card. And then we have Blazing Flare Dragon. Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 13k base. Act Vanguard or Rearguard, once per turn, Soul Blast one or more cards. For each card, Soul Blast for this cost. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. And if the, it's on Van, you paid five or more Soul Blast. Remove all of your gift markers from your, their, your opponent's circle and their protect markers from their hand. So he works on both Vanguard or Rearguard, which is really nice. Only cost one or more Soul Blast, so you can choose the amount you Soul Blast. And regardless of where he's at, he can nuke five rear guards or more. And if you paid five or more Soul Blast while he's on the Vanguard Circle, they lose their gifts. Yeah, and this thing is somehow better. In, in my opinion, it's better than Reverse because this thing is easier to pull off because there's like Soul Charge possibilities in Kagura and you can literally nuke a board really easily. In my opinion, I like this more than Blade Master. And then we have Auto Vayner Rear Guard once when this unit attacks Soul Charge 1, and if your opponent's Vanguards are great, they're good, and they have no Rear Guards, it gets plus 10 for the battle. So it works on both. It is a mandatory Soul Charge, though, when it attacks. You have no choice. Who, No matter who it attacks into, regardless of what great threat or regardless of what units they have on board, it is a mandatory Soul Charge, which sucks for you. But, you know, if they have, if they're at great, and this sucks because, like, you know, it could deck you out faster, but if they're at grade 3 or greater, and they have no Rear Guards, Boy Swings for 23. All around pretty great, pretty great card, and I like its art a lot. I give it a four of like I genuinely like how I made a deck for Locks and Polaris. I literally made a deck separating all three of them. While you can use like two of them in the same deck or like all three of them in the same deck if you really wanted to, which I wouldn't recommend, but you could if you wanted to. I choose to like separate them because they all have their own unique flair. This one destroys gifts. This one makes it harder for your opponent, but also making the gameplay interesting. And then this one is basically a one shot to anyone who tries two to passing it. And then we have our some Lyric Monasterio cards, a Normal Order and Sweet X Sweet. Uh, grade 2 Normal Order, play it by counterblasting 1, look at the top 5 cards of your deck, choose up to 1 unicard from among them, call to rearguard and shuffle your deck. So you get a rearguard. Cool. Pretty nice. Just for a counterblast. I debated about running this, in my opinion, because I don't think I would ever use it. But I gave it a 2. Honestly, I, I might use it in Willista just because it gets me a unit without making myself deck out. But... I think it's still pretty good. I give it a three of. Next up, we have Gracioso, uh, Gracioso Prince Meredith, grade two, intercept, 5k shield, 10k base. This does not look like a prince to me, nor male. <laughs> that is a. Uh, I don't know really. I don't know why. This just looks weird to me. Anyways, auto rear. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, look at top seven, choose up to one order card from among them, reveal it, put it to your hand, and show for your deck. Who is this for again? How many, what decks do have, or, like, okay, this is a really good generic card, obviously, because it works with all of them, because at least all of them have an order, not all of them would run in order, but at least all of them have an order that they could run, like, I can think of Alcestis having the big whale thing, uh, um, the angels having the blitz order, because it just says one order card, it doesn't say normal order, blitz order, set order, uh, What's it called? Uh, Lorinol has literally every song. Lista has the gems, but I never have had problems running with the gems, so this is not going to go on my build personally. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of what the other ones were. What were the other decks? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, oh, Dragon Girls. This this would actually help Dragon Girls a lot because while it may not be an Earnest Scout, it gets you a sir. I mean, you always have one open. You're always gonna have like one open slot. So while one of your rear guards might go to the back center and might be useless. I mean, you know, getting a search for the order that you need for, like, field nuking, pretty good. What was the other deck that I'm thinking of? There's one, oh, Felt Rosa, that's what, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, Felt Rosa, Felt Rosa got an order, right? Wait, no, that was the Zorga thing that just happened to be a Felt Rosa card. I don't know, they, I, I think Felt Rosa might have one, but I cannot think of it off the top of my head, but at least all the other niche, like, all the other decks have an order that you can be sourced by this. Aram Meredith is really good, and I like him, her, it, whatever for being the card that it is be just because it's like very splashable with all the decks. So four of, three of, as you wish. Probably gonna be expensive though. Next up on the list we have, Beware of Overeating Ellen. Incidentally, I'm reviewing this right after dinner, so that's funny. Grade one, boost, 5k short, AK base. Auto rear, when it's boost or rear guard, look at the top card of your deck, you may put it to top or bottom. Okay, so free look at the top card. I would honestly think this is the Fel Rosa card. Except I'm 95% sure this thing ain't a ghost, and if it is, then slap me silly and call me Sally, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Where did that come from? Why in my mind did I think that was a good idea to say? What caused me to say that? that you know what? It, it, it's fun. Three copies of this card. Let's just pretend this didn't happen. Let, let's pretend this part of the video never happened, okay? Let's just continue to the next card. <clears throat> next up, we have Wings of the Famous School Elinol. That is probably pronounced wrong. 10k base, 5k show, grade 2 intercept. Black wings when placed on rear, you may soul charge 2. Oh no, it's not may. You have to soul charge 2. Okay. You get soul, and a lot of the black wings cards cost soul blast. So it's a good card. I, I give it a good card. I give it a 2 of if you try to make like an... If you're trying to make like an all focus black wing deck, I say 3 of. But if you try to build into the deck I do where you mix your black wings and white wings together, I say 2 of. Next up on the list, we have... The Murakuma reveals, and I was disappointed in this boy at first because I saw his 8k base and didn't want him, but we'll take a look at his skill and then I'll say why it's fine. Stel Special Stealth Beast Weasel Black, definitely one of my most anticipated cards of this set. Grade 3 Twin Jive Excel Gift 8k base, auto ones put onto Vanguard Circle, search after 1, Special Stealth Beast Weasel Red, Cult to Rearguard and Shuffle Your Deck. If you don't remember Weasel Red is, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, on place, rear guard, or vanguard, I believe. Counter boss one, discard any number of hand cards, and search your deck for up to any number, up to the special, special stealth beast, and call the same number that you discarded. So basically a way to span the board. So now this one gets you one for free, and then wet red calls the rest of them. So basically by riding this, you could essentially get a full board, which is really nice. And continues vanguard, all of your units with special on their card names, including himself, because just as units, get plus 2k power and 5k shield. So he's a 10k base and a 5k shield on guard circle. But that also applies to every one of your other stealth beasts. So all of your grade ones are immediately 15k guards, or at least the very few of them that are special stealth beasts, and now your grade twos are 10k intercepts. Now, before I get to a slur skill, I really wish what they did here. I know it's Link Joker. I'm not Link. Yeah, I know it's the Link Joker arc base, which is why Hyaki Vogue got into this. But I really, and not to discourage any of the Hyaki Vogue games, because I'm not saying I don't like its new form, but I really wish they chose to do more weasels over the other two Murakuma cards we have, because this thing works so well with the current weasels, it, like even if the other weasels were bad for some reason, they would still be good because they have the weasel name, but unfortunately, or special, sorry, but unfortunately we don't get them. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying I kind of wish we got more weasels. And then his other skill is Auto Van. When it attacks a grade 3 or greater, grade 3 or higher Vanguard, Counter Boss 1 put 4 normal units from your drops onto the bottom of your deck in any order. If you do choose up to 4 grade 2 or lower rear guards, especially on their card names with different card names, and stand them. So, restand board. Or not board, but restand columns. And or multiple Excel gifts. Mmm. <clears throat> When we got the blurbs of this skill, I didn't think it would be a restander. I know what I'm doing next week in terms of test. I know what I'm doing after this in terms of testing. I'm going to upload it next week, but I know what I'm doing after this. Uh, four of, three of, amazing card, thing that I really wish is cheap and that I will hold in the, my lap like a baby. Four of. Next up, we have thing I think is a cool art, but I don't like its skill. Fant Platium Blonde Fox Spirit Taman Tamamo. No, I hate its name. I hate. I like its skill. Great three twin drive excel gift twelve k base auto when it's revealed during your drive check. You may call it to rear. Okay, so that's really good. I can just call himself. Get you an extra attack. Cool. And auto when it's placed on rear, choose a unit card from your drop zone, and this unit gets that unit's card name. Tons of turn. So 
You can pick a stealth fiend. You can pick a stealth fiend. <laughs> uh, uh, jokes aside, obviously you meant to use a stealth fiend based on its third skill, which is auto van or rear when it attacks. If you have three or more stealth fiend cards in their different card names, soul bounce one in this unit gets plus 10k and plus one drive for the turn, I mean for the battle, and at the end of the battle, bounce it to hand if it's on rear. So, can sw can get be can be drive checked and called, swing with it, soul blast, plus 10, bounce, and then you, um, if it's on van, you get an extra drive out of it. And he can cone a Stealth Fiend. Okay, that's pretty good. I definitely do think this is obviously Stealth Fiend support for, like, uh, Neura from last from last V Collection. I'm not going to say it's good support, because all it does is, like... The thing we needed more of was just not cards that could clone Stealth Fiend's names, but cards that could... But cards, like, that were inherently Stealth Fiends, because cloning their names don't do anything if there's a copy on the board. So, I was really hoping this would not support Stealth Fiends, just because, like, it wouldn't be a good support. I mean, it's still good, because, like... If you don't have a copy on your board, it's a way to increase the stealth fiend amount on your field. And he can call himself during your drive check, so it gets around Nura's, uh, your drive check goes to drop, because it's going to call itself before it goes to drop. And it also has an all rearguard skill, which is really helpful for just soul blasting and Dragatsu Girls, a stealth fiend who can soul charge. So I, I give this thing a good card, like, I, I give it a 3 of. You can even build your own dedicated deck around it. So 3 of, 4 of, maybe even. And then we have Covert Demonic Dragon. Yaki Vogue, reverse you! I like the little wing detail. That's what I like about this. I like the wings, and I like the little black hole back here. Not the ring surrounding the boy, but, like, the black hole in the background right here. And I guess it's Katana's cool, too, but everything else I kind of is mad about. <clears throat> Anyways, 12k base, great, easy return traffic, Selga. Continuous deck, vanguard, or rearguard circle. It is also regarded as covert demonic dragon, Hyaki Vogue. Why am I not surprised that it counts itself as that one? And act vanguard once per turn, soul boss one. Search your deck for up to three cards of the same card name as this unit. Call them to rear guard and shuffle your deck. Then choose the same number of rear guards as the number of units called and lock them. So if you call three, unless one of them was, unless you have a full board beforehand, you're locking one of the three. So what I would do with this is I would call a back row of whatever the hell that I'm fine with locking, use this boy skill, literally search my deck for three cards, maybe, no, just have all of them be like the regular Hiyaki, because you always want to set those up first and get them to hand, call three of the regular Hiyaki, lock the entire back row, use all the front row Hiyaki skills, I mean even if they're used, okay, maybe not the, maybe not all of them, maybe just call one of them and then just get power to your units, so yeah, I could definitely see uh, Hiyaki Pokeverse coming in handy here. And then auto van, when your rear when your locked cards are unlocked during your end phase, put a rear guard to the bottom of your deck and choose one of your rear guards and return it to hand. So a way to get Excel gifts back for next turn and a way to keep to make sure that your units don't die. Okay, honestly, I like this. It's really good. It's really easy to pull off. Literally for its first skill, which can call three units to go off, it's a soul blast of one. I mean, yeah, you have to lock a card for each unit call, but that's not really that much of a cost, is it? And it's uh you know, Allows you to shove stuff to bottom and then get your units back. Once more, you, you could just send the unit you cloned back to bottom and get the other one back to hand. But the other important part about this is that it's uh wait, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, this thing, none of its skill is remotely restricted to the opponent being a grade three. So if you gather enough counter blasts and you play it right, you could kill your opponent on first grade three turn with this. I, ah, oh god, the numbers, the powers, I can already see it, I can see Hiyaki Vogue killing me. Okay, I need to, quickly, I, I need to figure out how to remove all the Murakumo cards off the internet so my friend cannot spam this against me. Quick, uh, Siri, how, how do you delete the internet? <laughs> uh, jokes aside, this thing scares me, but not to the level of Seraph Pure Light. I do think it's actually good, though. It's really interesting that they bring back the aspect of, one, it counts itself as the same copy in deck, so you can run these in Hyuga, and then you technically have 11 of these. I mean, I would run it like 3, 4, 4 if I were to put in Hyuga. I'm not going to put in Hyuga, but pretty interesting. So, wait, does that mean the deck rule gets broken because there's more than 4 of in the deck? No, of course it doesn't. I, I know the rules of deck ruling. I, I don't have to, I'm not stupid. So, either way, really good card. I go to 4 of. So now I must hide excitement because as I'm recording this, people are sleeping, but I want to let it be clear. I literally woke up at 2 a.m. in the morning because I thought for some reason these cards would be revealed. And I was fucking right. And I am so bleeding happy for it. You cannot hear it in my voice, but I am so fucking happy for it. And I'm literally going to test play it the second after I upload this video. So first up, we have the return of Incandescent... Well, not Incandescent Lion, but Salvation Lion, uh, Grand Ezo Scissorsy. 
Sorry, I forgot his name for a second. So first up, we'll start with the units. Grade 1, uh, Sacred Tome Beast White Lion. Grade 1 boost, 10k shield, 8k base. Auto Vanner Rear, when this unit attack hits, hit a target, the attack it boosted hits a Vanguard. Look at top 6, do up to 2 grade 3 Ezels in their different card name, reveal them, put it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. If you put 2 cards to hand, choose a card from your hand, put it to soul. Okay, a way to get soul, I'm not saying Ezels need soul, I mean the new Ezel needs soul, but honestly that's pretty good. It's a free search, it's an on hit, and just like Wingo Brave, my friend is never going to let me let this hit because he hates on hit abilities for some reason. So I'm never going to get to use this, but it's still a good card. Because you get to add two different Ezels to your name with different names and it allows you to add versatility because you could add an Indescent Land Blonde Ezel and a Platinum Ezel, for example. And I mean, you can add the other two as well if you have enough of these. So I'll run pretty good card and I love it. I'm just never going to be able to get this off, but it's really good in an early game, so four of. Next up, we have Knight of Passion Bagdemagus. Grade 2, Intercept 5k shield, 9k base. During your turn, this unit gets plus 5k power for each grade 3 in your, with Ezel and its card name for into your soul. So there's only ever four Ezels at a time, so that's only plus 20. But that is still pretty good. 29k swing on your turn. Pretty good. And continues Rearguard. If your soul has two or more grade three cards, when it would attack, it battles all your opponent's units in a column. So now he's a column killer. Okay, so the thing with Ezel before is that it wasn't as aggressive. And it was like one of the earlier Excel decks, so it couldn't get power as well. At least that's how my build was. Bagdemagus fixes that. He gets the power. And he can kill a column. Honestly, I love this thing. It is really nice. And it is definitely a good card. I might not run it at a 4 of because of spacing. But I will definitely run it at at least a 3 of. Because he's really good. And next up we have the thing I've literally been waiting for the entire time that V Collection got revealed. Salvation Lion Grando Ezos Cesari. I would have literally screamed, but once more, people are sleeping. Uh, grade 3, Twin Drive, Excel Gift, 12k base. Act of Vanguard, once per turn, put a Grade 3 with Ezel and its card name from your hand into soul. Choose all of your Grade 3 cards with Ezel and their card names, not named Salvation Line, Grand Ezel Scissors, and your soul until this, and this unit gets their abilities to end of turn. So you guaranteedly get at least one Ezel, your opponent doesn't have to be a Grade 3 for this, and you get a lot of skills off. Alrighty, if we stop there, I love this thing. Because that means I can use Salvation Line, Raven Haired, and the original all at once. And the original calls a unit during battle phase from hand. Salvation, uh, not Salvation Line, uh, Plotna just stacks triggers. And what's the other one? Uh, Raven Haired gives me 15 and or 10, a crit and Sentinel nullification. When they said this was support all Ezels, I didn't think this is what they meant, but I was hoping this is what they meant. And then Act Vanguard, if your opponent's Vanguard is a grade 3 or greater, and if your soul has two or more grade 3 cards, counter boss 1 to end of turn, this unit gets drive plus 1, and your opponent cannot activate Vanguard auto abilities and, and unlock all of your locked cards. Oh, shit. This thing is a counter to literally every reverse unit. Or at least Himiko, because if you don't remember, Himiko's auto ability is when it attacks or is attacked. This is literally counter boss 1 for the turn. Not just its battle, but for the turn. It does get that extra drive, which means you can abuse Platinum more with it. But it also means cards that have like nullification or auto abilities on Van can't use them. Like Himiko's ability is fucking useless now. And there, there's another thing in V, but I don't remember what it is. Base and like Yada Garasi. Oh my fucking god, Ezel Scissors just. And he unlocks all your lock cards. This thing is fucking broke. Not, and it stops Chaos Breaker. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Grand Ezel Scissors is perfect. Oh, uh, okay, well, not perfect, but still. So, they found a way to make Grand Ezel Scissors not broken against every reverse unit, but somehow good against literally anything that has an auto ability. And it's all for the cost of a counter blast. And not to mention, this first ability is free, by the way. You just have to put a grade 3 Ezel into your soul. All I'm going to say is this. I am at, in my insides. I am screaming with joy, fangirling, over the fact that this thing got revealed. <laughs> I just want to let that be clear. It cannot be understood from my voice right now, but I want to let it be clear. I'm literally fangirling on the inside. So, like... Just imagine me screaming for reasons. 
I'm, I'm not even gonna say it. Four of d- d- it's amazing. You know, fuck it. If I have the time, I will make this the deck profile. Wait, no, wait, yes. Fuck, I can't do it this week. Next week, the first deck profile. Grand as I said, I was gonna do it this week, but I already have my two Excel decks lined up for it. Next up, we have news of DBT05 Triumphant Return of the Rival War- Warlords. So I feel kind of bad that we're getting these. Because my problem with the Triumphant Return of Warlords is that if you can tell, there are no Varinas or Yu-Yu in the box art. And while that may not mean anything, Overjust is getting a season 3 and 4, or at least a season 3. Why is Varina now not in the art? Are we still going to get Varina evolutions and support? Or was that the end of all the new grade 3s? Because, okay, first off, Rival of the Warlords, I'm not discouraging anything, because if you can't tell, we got MLB, Dragonic Overlord, The End, and Phantom Blaster Overlord. So we're getting all those encounter cards, which is really nice. And we have their support in Burn Rise Dragon, uh, Blaster Blade, or, no, sorry, Burning Horn Dragon, Blaster Blade, and Skull Witch Domain. So I'm not discouraging anything from these cards, I'm just saying that are we no longer getting... Verena, Magnolia, Seraph, Snow, etc. support? Because if we're not, then they just kicked us all in the dicks. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope they're good at least, but I really hope we get something for them. But I'm still, I'm still hyped for this. And then in Corset 5, we also have five new ride lines for Craycross. This also makes me think we're not going to get any new support for the boys, because we literally have three of them decided. Uh, Grass Boy, I mean, Night Boy, Other Night Boy, Genesis card. <laughs> That, that, that's my opinion on that. It's ah, their card, and then they then this this one is just clean. Like this is my favorite. Like this looks so cool. I mean, so does this, but this looks cooler. Like people, I mean, this one looks okay, but this is better. And then in terms of these, we have Blaster Blade already because we just got its skill as well. <clears throat> so I guess we're getting Cray Cross in the next set. So I guess that's fine. I'm curious to see what they'll do. I'll give them a. I'll give them a solid chance, because I'm really hoping that if they had to scrap Verena for this, it better be within reason. I see myself maining one of these two, unless one of these two happens to be something like Peaks Mantris. I doubt I'll main this one, though. Then again, if I overdress as anything to say about it, I'll probably main that one. And next up, we have Blasta Blade returning. I'm very disappointed in this. Here's the thing, I wanted Ezels to be the thing. If we were going to go back to Kita Santra, I wanted it to be Ezels. But I knew it wasn't going to be Ezels. I knew instinctively this would be Blaster Blade because it's fucking bushy. <sighs> but also, why did they have to go back to Kita? Is Dragon Empire and Kita the only nations that are going to get encounter cards? Because if you can't tell, the two clans getting supported here are Kita and Dragon Empire. So... Anyways, Blaster Blades go. Uh, Tanky Base 5 can show grade 2 with Intercept. Auto, when it's placed on Van, Counter Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's rear guards. Kill it if you did not retire draw a card. So either they lose a rear guard and draw. Okay, I'm not going to say that's better than Blaster Dark because Blaster Dark is personally better because you get an extra drive. So while your opponent will know the card that gets added to your hand, you get more chances to trigger them. And, I mean, you also have to sack your own rear guard, so mm. And the auto one is placed on rear counter boss one, choose an opponent's grade two or greater rear guard and retire. Okay, now that is better than Blaster Dark because it's just a kill rear guard. So, I guess, like, if you want to splash it in with PBD, give it a three of, because it, since PBD also just says Blaster in its card name and this has a Blaster, you can just spam it in with it. But I'm kind of curious to see where MLB takes us. So, three of, four of, maybe? Next up, we have our little keywords for the Lyrica decks. First one is Powerful, and second one is Friends. Okay, you know when they're not trying anymore, when the first keyword they say is powerful. What do you mean by fucking powerful? Do you mean numbers? Do you mean rear guards? Do you mean, like, when I say rear guards, I mean, like, like obviously I'm referring to numbers. Do you mean hand cards? You can get hand cards very powerfully, whatever the fuck that means. And friends. Okay, that's just Clarissa. <laughs> so, this one makes no sense whatsoever, besides the fact of possibly just being power stacking. And this one is just a ripoff of Clarissa, I assume. And I'm assuming they go with this one to this one. I don't know. That's just an assumption. I really wish they gave us more keywords, but fair enough. And now we have a grade 4 for Kari. Not even gonna, like, lead into it. It's just a grade 4 for Kari. 
So now I know they're doing some favoritism bullshit. Okay, I guess it was predictable because it's fucking Lyrica, the embodiment of Bermuda Triangle. There's no way in hell they weren't getting a grade for it. But why did they get one and Orphis didn't and Zorga didn't? And I'm naming two decks that I don't really like that much. Preferably Yuji got a grade for, but it didn't either. Why Kari? I mean, yes, Kari is my favorite out of like all the Lyrica decks, but why Kari? This grade 4 better be worth it if they didn't give Orphist or uh, Zorga a grade 4. It better be worth it because this didn't appear in the anime. <laughs> That's my reason why it doesn't deserve it. It didn't appear in the anime. Because I, I, I don't think Kari really needs this. I mean, Orphist and Zorga don't need it either, but we all know we wanted Zorga and Orphist to get a grade 4. Don't lie. Uh, we'll just have to see what this does. But we're getting Lyrica news, so we'll probably find it soon. And next up, we have news on Festival Collection 02. Uh, I see an interesting little dragon. I see a blaze maiden. I see you, you in a suit. And then I see this thing. <laughs> okay, sure, sure, sure. I remember the previous grade three from a uh, Keto Sanctuary worked out amazingly in budget decks from the Festival Collection. So I'm hoping that this grade three works out really well as well. This one, I mean, the last blaze maiden. I, from a collection that I literally have yet to get rid of. Mirren was so amazing. So I'm hoping she's on the same scale. Actually, I'm kind of hoping she's not because then I have to get rid of Mirren or someone else. And then this one, I used the Diablos card for a while, but then I tuck it out because I didn't really like it that much. So hopefully like she's better and something I'll keep. And then our last little bit of knowledge is stuff about the premium collection where we are getting G guards for every nation. I don't know if these are G-Guards themselves, but these look like Strikes, because that's fucking Vanquisher. <laughs> and I don't want to hear otherwise. I mean, not Vanquisher, sorry, Vermilion, and I don't want to hear otherwise. I want to say this is Mordred, but I know it's not. Because, uh, that's either a new Mordred. No, okay, because this is a new Vermilion. This is either Crimson or Vermilion. One of the two. It's either Crimson or new Grade 4. No, it has to, no, because they're premium collectors, which means it has to be Grade 4. This is, a, this is Vermilion's Grade 4. This is a new Vermilion. I'm calling it right now. This, I, it's an evolution of a card. I don't remember what it is, but it's from Neo Nectar. I literally remember it. I remember this card distinctly, but it's an evolution of a Neo Nectar card. And this, I cannot remember what this is an evolution of. It looks like Mordred, but I know it's not Mordred. It's either an evolution of Mordred. It's at least a Revenger. That's for sure. So this is a Revenger. I'm calling it right now. This is a new Vermilion for grade four. And this is an evolution of our previous card. I'm fucking calling it right now. <laughs> Either way, that's it for the reveals. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And, uh... Yeah. Donate to the Patreon for Ezel because... Whew. I am so fucking happy right now. <laughs> you don't even know. Because of my voice, but I promise you I am. And I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to stand up. You're Vanguards. Thank you.